Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this 93rd episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests on this episode include actress and author Reagan J. Pasternak. We'll be talking about the book Griffin's Heart, plus how she's learning to deal with pandemic times and going back to work in the acting field as well. We'll also visit with new Canadian artist Braden Paul. We'll be talking about his debut single, Getting Kind of Tired. Hope you will enjoy that. He's also going to play that single for us as well. If you would, please take the time to subscribe, comment, leave some feedback, check out the shop, and share with your friends. Now, the U.S. got its first big heat wave of the year this week. So Google Trends put out a bunch of stats on summer things we're Googling more than usual right now. And here are some highlights. First off, the top near me searches this week include swimming near me, water parks near me, pools near me, and strawberry picking near me. Second, searches for beaches and swimming pools have skyrocketed. Most of the country wants to know where the closest pool is, and people near the ocean are more likely to search for a beach. Number three, the phrase signs of a heat stroke has jumped 200%, headache from heat is up 255%, and heat exhaustion in dogs jumped 180%. Number four, the top four kids searches include sprinklers for kids, plastic pool for kids, splash pad for kids, and best sunscreen for kids. We're also searching for safe sunscreens three times more than normal. And number five, searches for ceiling fan direction in summer are up 300% this week. Just so you know, it should be going counterclockwise to push the air down, not up. Actress, author, and uh, inspirer, I would also say as well. Reagan Pasternak back with us today. And first off, Reagan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me back. I love chatting with you all those months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Man Alive, the, uh, the, the last few months, what's it been like since we last talked about the response that you've gotten from readers that have connected with the book and maybe helped them do a little healing as well? Oh, my gosh. So, Cameron, that's been my favorite, uh, most surprising part. And I can barely talk about it without bawling because um, it's just been so wonderful to connect with people who I don't know, but um, that but have who have reached out to me, have sent me photos of their of their animal being, as I call them in the book, um, and um, just um, telling me h how much the book helped. And I, I hate saying that it sounds so silly, but, but, um, it really, um, it's been so unbelievably, um, overwhelming and I feel so unbelievably grateful. That's how I feel. So now yeah. when, it, when you, when you take on a project like this, I mean, what was your original concept of the, of the book and was it originally just a book or did it, uh, did it just evolve as you were working on it? So yeah, that's exactly what happened. Um, I had the idea after I'd lost my, as I call him, my soulmate animal Griffin. And I was so brokenhearted. I started writing more, um, just memories and, and, um, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know where it was going. I just had it in me and I couldn't kind of shake it. And then over the years, I just kept writing anytime I'd, I'd think of it. And, and because I'm such a chronic reader, you're kind of um, inadvertently being influenced by everything you're reading. And I was equating everything I was reading to how, how does this relate to um, grieving an animal? How does this relate to it? And I'm a huge journaler. And then I think all, all of it started coming together um, just completely organically. And then I was, I had such a clear vision that I wanted it to be extremely interactive and very, very, um, almost like I'm sitting with the reader one on one, and we're 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 sharing our, our our experiences together. And for you, what was it that? And I know we touched a little bit on this last time around. What is it about Griffin that so gripped you that uh, <laughs> that 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 really just still with you each and every day today? Um, I I think I think it's one of those things like how do you explain why you love someone, anyone, a person or an animal? You know, it's it's just this it's this. I don't know, a soul connection or, or, or the timing or, you know, everything in between. He was an amazing creature. He just was, he was just kind and sweet, 
but on top of all of that, um, he came in my life at a time that I really needed that kind of unconditional, you know, love and support. And, you know, animals are, you know, well, some, some animals, animals, unfortunately pass very early and that also hurts. That's a whole other kind of thing, but, but, um, they're witnesses to your life. You know, they watch you through breakups and through, um, love and through triumphs and, and failures. And they're there the whole time as these quiet, you know, uh, this quiet presence that's just there. And, and, um, and it, and then you fall in love with that. And so for me, Griffin, Griffin witnessed so much of my life. And so, you know, he moved across, he moved to a new country with me. I'm from Canada and I live in Los Angeles now. I mean, he was such a big part of, of all of it. So, so what does it mean when you lose them? It's just this chunk of your, of your existence is all of a sudden gone. And so what is, so that, and that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of exploring um, grief. I really do think so, because you're, you're not just, you know, it's not, it doesn't only have to be this sad, this sad thing. It is sad. Of course it is, but it's also, what does it say about you? And that's something I say at the very end of the book. I say, what does it say about you? What does it say about them? What does it say that you love this animal so much? Not, it's not just about them. It's also, who are you? What, what, what does it mean? What did it, you know, it, they, they, they're there to kind of document part of your life and, and, um, you can explore the reasons why, why they meant so much to you. And you kind of learn a ton about yourself, really. Obviously we, we talked, it's kind of, uh, interactive kind of a little scrapbooking. Now is, is Griffin's heart, is this something that you would say to, to maybe a new dog owner? Maybe this would be an idea to, to journal through their lives as well, to keep as a keepsake as well. Um, I, Sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I feel like it's, you know, you kind of want to be in the moment when you have your animal with you. I mean, I, I, I would definitely say, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to take that away from somebody who, who has their animal present with them, but I will say I just lost one of our dogs who was, who was, um, his name was Jed. He, I talked about him in the book. He was actually named after the song that my husband and I would listen to after Griffin died called Jed the Humanoid. And it just reminded me of Griffin so much. And so we called Jed, Jed the Humanoid, and we just lost him. And that was absolutely brutal, but I wouldn't have. And, and honestly, I, I'm using my own book to get through that same pain and, and kind of thinking, you know, I said to my husband, I was, I said, you know, and now I, now I really know that this is, I believe in this so much, you know, I believe in, in, in the grief process. And, and, um, as, as Tom Zumba says, and I, I quote him in the book, he's, he's so brilliant. This, he's a, he's a famous speaker and grief guide. And he says, there is an art to mourning. And, 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 um, if you can do that, you can find so much meaning and I'm finding meaning in, in Jed's loss and everything he brought to our life now, but I wouldn't have really wanted to do that while he was alive. I want to be in the moment with him. And then that, that pain when they're gone, it's almost, the book is kind of there to, there to go, help you through to the next, that next part. And also really just to commemorate your animal, because that is also what you're doing. Reagan, as you you go through this with Jed as well, are you noticing as as you go through the the loss again how you have changed emotionally as as you pro- progress and process each different one? Absolutely, I think every loss is so different. Um, they none of them feel good, but there's some that just rock you a little bit more than others. And um, I really have completely changed from writing that book and really you know, exploring what it means to lose someone. And, you know, I, I lost my mom in the last year and a half. So it was right before the book came out. So it's all tied into this, just what, what does it mean to be in grief? And, and, um, and I, I, I'm just, I feel like I got, I feel like Griffin gave me this giant gift by putting this idea in my head that I couldn't shake and worked my butt off getting it done. And, and, um, so no, he really did though. And I, cause I cannot believe I didn't realize how rewarding the after part would be after I was finished and ah, connecting and connecting with people and, and just, um, really thinking about grief in such a, such a different way than I used to. And it's still hard. Don't get me wrong. It's still hard, but there's a way through it. 
how much do you appreciate as things are opening up to be able to be able to socialize again and 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 how much different is the is the landscape in your day job uh, doing the in the acting process i mean how much different do things look now reagan Oh, my goodness. I, I think I am ready, just like the rest of the country and the world, sadly, is ready to get back to normal. I'm vaccinated. I'm I'm so I'm, you know, seeing people now going to going to restaurants and, and life is feeling a lot more back to normal for me. And um, and acting wise. Oh, my goodness. So I I just wrapped recently a, a, a really hilarious reoccurring on this show called Miss Pat that will be out in um, July. And yeah, that was a, that was a crazy experience because, you know, you're, you're, it was a, it was, it's a sitcom. So, um, you know, there's a, there's actually a live studio audience that had to get COVID tested. I was tested, I was tested three times a week. And because I was flying back and forth from LA to Atlanta the whole time, I was quarantining. And I mean, it's a different world. And then, you know, you're rehearsing with a mask on and then all of a sudden you're filming and you've never seen this person's face. It's just bizarre. The whole thing is just such a bizarre experience. I'm just so lucky I got to work through it because so many actors have, oh my gosh, it's been really hard. And um, yeah, so it's been a different world. I'm, I'm excited for things to just keep picking up. And there, I've got a few things on the horizon I'm so excited for and 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 I mean honestly the book has just been keeping me so busy and um so focused really how has your inspiration changed now that you've got author at the end of uh, of, <laughs> of all of the intro part I mean have you got inspiration for for future projects writing as well it's so funny. I feel like when somebody says that, I feel like, oh, I get all like, I feel like I'm like, a, I'm in fifth, I'm in fifth, I'm in fifth grade getting all embarrassed or something because I, I, I think I, I feel like an intruder or something. I feel like, or an imposter. That's the, that's the, they call it imposter syndrome. I've heard that now. And I'm like, I'm not an author, but I guess I, I technically am an author now, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of riding the wave. And, and um, for me, it, I don't know if it's so much that I'm an author or I just had to write this one book that was just so in my bones, but um, yeah, no, I, and, 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 I am so, I am somebody who is, gets really, I, I'll get depressed if I'm not being creative. So I, I do have other things constantly going through my head. I'm always writing down new ideas for things, but I don't know. I'm really wanting to, you know, cause Griffin's heart has just recently come out and, and I, and I, um, I'm doing so much press for that that I'm trying to just focus on that. And then, you know, the acting stuff. So um, for now, this is, for now, I'm going to try to focus on this. We'll see how long I can last. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Now, uh, Reagan, I always do want to make sure and, and let our listeners know where they can keep up with uh, with more information, not only about the book, but social media wise, everything else you've got going on as well. Okay. So um, the book is on Amazon. Actually, um, it's in a store called um, my Faithful, oh, shoot, it just started in a new store called, I should really get this down since it's at the store now, called MyFaithfulFriends.com. And um, they have it there too. But you can just get it on Amazon. Go to Griffin'sHeart.com to learn more and you can, you know, see a little bit more about the book. And um, and then I am at Reagan J. Pasternak. If you want to know more about me on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. And, and uh, we've got a Facebook page for Griffin's Heart. And then people have been sending me their tributes and memorials and I'm I'm terribly unorganized with it but we're we're trying to get it get it off the ground but we are getting beautiful stories and tributes from people's animals and that's going to be at Griffin's Heart book on on uh, Instagram That's awesome. Well, Reagan, I truly appreciate you again taking some time out of your schedule. Love love the book and uh, and how it's helping others that are going through what uh, what we have gone through ourselves as well. Yeah. I ho- hope you have a continued great rest of your week and uh, look forward to talking Aww. to you again real soon, my friend. Anytime. Thanks so much, Cameron. I'll talk to you soon. Now, this seems like something you could obviously be fired for, but maybe not. Right before the pandemic hit last March, a 66-year-old guy in England named Colin Kane called in sick to work, then got caught hanging out at a bar. So his company fired him. Now he's a heavy smoker and has a lung condition, and when his boss called him on a Monday, he said that he had to stay in bed all day. But then someone spotted him out at a bar drinking beer and smoking while he was still out sick on Tuesday. Now they fired him for it, but then he sued for wrongful termination. 
and a judge just ruled that he shouldn't have been fired. The company's handbook doesn't specifically say you can't go out and socialize in public if you've called in sick, and that's why the judge sided with him. Now he's due back in court soon when they'll decide how much money the company has to pay him for wrongful termination. Now we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but that doesn't mean there aren't hardworking Americans out there doing the real work to satisfy our thirst for knowledge. Now someone has conducted a study to determine the hangriest states. Yeah, now if you're unfamiliar, that is hunger-caused anger. Now they did it by looking at the number of fast food joints and Walmarts per capita in each state. The work break down laws in each location the percentage of adults with diabetes, and the number of searches for the word hanger. Now, the basic idea is that the easier it is to satisfy your hunger, the less hangry you'll become. Now, in the end, the hangriest state is Maine, followed by Mississippi, Alaska, Vermont, South Dakota, Idaho, West Virginia, Oregon, Montana, and Rhode Island. And the least hangry state is Illinois, followed by Georgia. Now you can see the full rankings at Zipia.com, but you might want to make a note that there are several ties. Our final guest on the show today is a Canadian artist, and uh, I had the single came through uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, the, the new single, Getting Kind of Tired. First time I spun it, by the, by the time I was through the chorus, I was sending an email. I was sending a message to uh, to Braden Paul, Canadian artist, and uh, we got him on the show today. First off, Braden, appreciate you taking some time, brother. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you. Now, 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 tell me first off, uh, Canadian artist. Where did when did music? Uh, when did you know you had something that you needed to get out there? And and how excited are you to have a, a single out there as well? You know, I've had music uh, in my blood and playing music for a very long time since I was actually nine years old. Uh, but I've just had the opportunity throughout this pandemic to uh, record and get my song out there on all uh, streaming platforms. Now, what's it like in the midst of a pandemic? Um, I mean, you've got to have a little bit of tech. Uh, you've got to be a little tech savvy to be able to do that stuff, right? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, it just takes a lot of reaching out to people and getting them to listen and get their ideas and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm a little bit techie, but at the same time, uh, music's my passion and I'm not too good at computers. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, where did you first fall in love with music? I mean, who were the early inspirations that uh, that, that really uh, got your ear pierced up a, a little bit, if you would? You know, uh, one of my very first bands that I really enjoyed listening to was uh, a Secondhand Serenade. I'm not sure if you've heard of them or not, but mm -hmm. they're definitely one of my favorite bands. Uh, and they're kind of the music genre. And then, of course, Blink-182 uh, and Justin Bieber and all that stuff uh, uh, is something that I really grew up listening to and enjoying. And, of course, all of the more punk rock bands, uh, for sure, that was something that I really enjoyed. When did you actually start putting pen to paper and, and writing down your own thoughts to share musically as well? I would probably say when I, uh, I, I, so I'm also a drummer and growing up, I used to play the drums and sing while playing the drums in my basement, uh, extremely loud. And I'm sure it wasn't the greatest for my family, <laughs> but probably at the age of 11 is when I started writing music. So, Yeah. Now, how much how much has your songwriting changed from from, from <laughs> that time to today? And uh, what would getting kind of tired? What would it sound like from eleven year old Braden? Uh, it would probably be it probably be a lot. Uh, it's a lot more organic, I'd say, and and you know my my own thoughts and my own words and you know my life experiences and stuff like that have obviously changed through when I was eleven to uh, my age twenty four now. So. Uh, that being said, uh, getting kind of tired would probably be, uh, at the age of 11, I'd it'd probably be more heavy metal rock version. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. A, a big feature on the drums, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> uh, that's probably all you'd hear actually. <laughs> so now, yeah. now, now on the pop genre, I mean, I've, I've deal with a lot of country artists as well, but, but, but in the pop genre, I mean, there's a lot of mixing and, and stuff like that. I mean, 
How much does do you figure that? Do, do you work with mixing as a writing as part of the writing process, or is it totally separate? Uh, you know, most of the time, how I start my writing process is, you know, I think of a experience that I've had in my life, uh, whether it be positive or negative, and then what I do is uh, I kind of step back and imagine it as a third person, as a person that'd be outside watching, you know, that experience kind of like a scene in a movie or something like that. And then I'll write the song and the chords to that. And then as time goes on, when I send it to other people and get their opinion, that's when the mixing and the producing will kind of clash and I have ideas, but it doesn't really pop out till then. So, yeah. Now, how well do you take feedback? I take feedback. uh, Great. Yeah, definitely. That's something that I've always had. I grew up with eight kids in my family. uh, (laughs) So, you know, I had a lot, I have a lot of feedback given to me throughout this uh, process of music for sure. Now has this last year, did the the being set apart and, uh, and being quarantined, did that maybe ultimately motivate you put a little extra drive in you for the music? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. It's one of those things that I had a little bit of time and, uh, it kind of all just worked out that, you know, um, I'm working with an artist and his name's Chez Anthony. He's actually been helping me produce my music and, uh, uh, with, you know, just reaching out to certain people in my area, I guess, region, uh, they've been really helpful to, you know, give me that eligibility to, uh, pursue this, this as my dream. So, yeah. And I know you mentioned, uh, I think we mentioned before we came on that uh, social media and, and all that, not a, a, a huge fan of that, but uh, social media as a new artist. I mean, what's the, what's the most challenging part of that for you? I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you know too much, but you know, there's that big whole new thing called TikTok, and I'm, I'm on there. <laughs> uh, and it's just kind of, you know, reminding yourself that uh, it's not necessarily about you know, trying to get as many fans as you can. It's about gaining that one fan, that one person that really is intrigued by your music and is intrigued by you as a person. And uh, that's kind of what I've been doing, you know? So I, and you know, it's, I, uh, I'm also a barber. So trying to get, you know, clients and stuff like that uh, through, you know, through social media now is a lot difficult too. So, you know, just, just all of that working together is there's a lot of stuff, um, but it's just a reminder that you only need one fan. You don't need millions, you know, and then it starts, starts picking up from there. So, yeah. Now, what, what, what's it like? Uh, what was it like to be able to say you had your first fan when, when was your first fan and, uh, and how excited were you to be able to, or, or were you maybe more embarrassed to say, I've got a fan? Yeah. You know, I think my first fan is actually my wife. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been together for a while, but I would say um, my first, fan that's not my wife it's been a pleasure to you know chat with them and and have their support and and really really see what their ideas are for me to help me in my music um but no i wouldn't say it's embarrassing at all it's definitely super awesome to see these people really enjoy uh the product that you're putting out there what's the what's the feedback that you've gotten so far from the new single you know i've had a lot of people uh just love the song you know, it's uh, a lot of people said this has helped me uh, get, you know, realize that there's other things in life than just this pandemic, you know, that uh, we can each live day to day. And, uh, you know, each day that we wake up is, you know, is a great thing, you know, and that, you know, there's a lot of hardship and a lot of people that have gone through struggle and a lot of fans that I do know of, you know, they've had a lot of, uh, you know, unfortunate things happen. But at the same time, you know, they said that this song has really helped them you know, realize that it's just about either loving yourself or, or loving the people around you that will help push you through. So that's good stuff. Now, I, I know that when we talked before, you said you might be able to play uh, something acoustic for us. Is the, is the single, was that what you were going to play for us? Yeah, today? yeah, yeah, definitely. I was thinking about playing, uh, playing, getting kind of tired for you guys. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we'd love to. Is Are, are you ready for it? Yeah, I, I am. Here's getting kind of tired. Getting kind of tired of waiting Getting kind of tired of phone calls Getting kind of tired of lockdown I wish that I could come home Getting kind of tired of anger Getting kind of tired of hurt I wish I could see a smile 
I hadn't seen one in a while Breathe in, breathe out Breathe in, pretend everything's alright If we could slow life down Maybe then we'll notice now I'm getting kind of tired of faith I'm getting kind of tired and lonely Even if it's you and me I'm getting kind of tired of hatred I'm getting kind of tired of pain I'm getting kind of tired of people I'm not knowing what to say If we could slow life down understand why i like the song so much that's good stuff (laughs) thanks man (laughs) now how has now that you got a single out there and uh obviously tiktok i'm sure you're getting a bit bit of a following from the music there as well how have uh how have goals changed over the last couple weeks has uh has goals changed for you a little bit you know growing up uh my uh my very first goal as a young kid was to get my my uh my very first single, I guess, on, on Spotify, you know, and I know that's pretty easy, you know, and stuff like that, but I wasn't sure how the whole process was, but that was, that was my goal was to get it on Spotify. And then, you know, as goals and everything changed and all that stuff, um, my, my first goal was to actually get it on radio, you know, uh, and not, not just any goal, but it being my first single, it was hopefully, you know, I want to push to get my first single on Spotify and get people to listen to it and then get it on radio. Uh, but then now, you know, it's kind of just like getting as many people to listen to it. Uh, I'm kind of in that weird stage of waiting, you know, uh, what do I do next? Uh, I'm writing a lot of music, uh, cutting a lot of hair. So all of that, you know, the goals are kind of the same, but, uh, just seeing that progress. And then at the same time, you know, uh, hopefully getting a new single out here soon. Cutting hair. How does that help you? Do, do you, does that give you time to listen to those stories? Do you get inspiration from some of the stories that you hear from, from your clients as well? I would say, uh, I'd say yes. You know, that's probably, that's probably one of the things that is, has been very helpful is hearing people's stories, you know, what they had to go through, you know, the struggles in, in their life and the positive things, you know, uh, I've had uh, in the past month here, I've had five clients get married. So, you know, all of those things, you know, just uh, the positivity and the negative things, you know, that has really helped me write, you know, write some of the music that I have. Now, where do you find the inspiration? What, what is it that really like makes your ear be like, ah, there's a song there. I got to make a note. What, what is it that trips the sensor what, for you? No, I'll be honest with you. I think, uh, I think this past week has actually been a little bit hard for me to write music. I, my brain's kind of, you know, as they call writer's block. Uh, at that stage, but you know, it's just something that I'm extremely passionate about, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, you know, walks, walks during the fall or, you know, stars or, you know, the city lights and all those types of things. Um, uh, definitely, you know, something that I think is catchy and then showing it to a couple other people, but the, I'm, I'm in that awkward station of, uh, state, state of wanting to 
a pop artist, but I'm kind of an indie pop artist, but then people say I can sing country. So it's kind of like mixing all of those together and then, uh, you know, giving people the best of all of that, you know? That's cool. Now, Braden, I always want to make sure and, and let our listeners know where they can find out more information about not only the single, the social media and, and upcoming singles as those become available as well. Where's the, where's the best place to keep up with everything? You know, I, I actually uh, just popped out a website there. It's just uh, www.bradenpaul.ca or .com. Uh, and then I'm, I'm quite, quite present on Instagram and TikTok. So uh, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, they can reach out to me there. Well, that's awesome. And again, Braden Paul, a Canadian artist, uh, we're, we're not going to put you in a genre. You can be whatever genre you feel like playing that day. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Braden, it's been great to visit with you today, brother. I appreciate you taking some time out and hopefully we'll catch up again real soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cam. I hope you have a great day. It was a pleasure. Well, thanks again for joining us for this 93rd episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, maybe anything else you'd like to know, you can hit me up on the contact page at gqwithcam.com. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at gqwithcam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, you can visit our merch store where we've got hoodies, shirts, tumblers, mugs, stickers, and more, gqwithcam.com forward slash shop. If you have a special guest idea, just email me, gqwithcam at gmail.com. Well, thanks again to our good friend Brandon Allen for coming up with our theme music. We're going to let him play us out and hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday.